Welcome to the impromptu training on the Med Sled Vertical Lift Rescue, better known as the VLR, on both the 36 and the 28 platform. What's the difference? The difference really is that the 36 is 36 inches wide, stands a little taller, will be more in a vertical position on your rucksack. Where the 28 is a more tactical version, tactical meaning it'll probably be at the bottom of your rucksack. It is easier to walk through a doorway or go through a confined space area. Both sleds will perform at the same level. The only significant difference between the two platforms is one is 36 wide, one is 28 wide. So we'll do most of our training on the 36 knowing that you can compare that to the 28. My name is Clifford Adkins and I look forward to walking you through this impromptu training session. Before we get started, however, I'd like to mention that I am not an expert in high angle rescue climbing and we typically believe the protocols for working with a human being in a portable device should take two people. Now you're going to see today I'll do most of the training in a singular fashion by myself because we may be faced with that in many of our situations in combat or in the theater. But in general, when working with a human, we would recommend two people if you have it while dealing with an individual. Before we get started, I want to just take you through some key attributes. First, again, I'll just show you on the sled, the 36 model, at this height, and the 28 model being at this height. A quick overview of how we design the new technology with the flexible litter. There were three key points we wanted to introduce into this new technology. One was a very simplistic design, a design that was easy to use in the field, needed limited training, and had a what we'd call a weave technology. And that weave technology was to create a net of high spec mill webbing around your patient to secure him into the sled. I'd like to walk you through some of those attributes. Both the 36 and the 28, as I mentioned, are both capable of vertical and horizontal lift, a requirement that the U.S. Army was requiring. The key was to have a 9,000 pound lift bridle. We're going to do that both vertically and horizontally with some 4,000 pound cross straps that will secure the patient into the sled. Let's take a look at how the med sled VLR system did that in the simplistic way. The heart of the sled is what we call the weave technology. It's that perimeter tether that runs around the perimeter of the sled. Let me show you. This tether here weaves in and out along the horizontal side of the sled, coming through the foot of the sled, back up the other side, and gathering here at the top in what we would call a 9,000 pound delta ring. This will be your connection point for a vertical lift. So again, this tether runs completely around the sled, through the foot, back up, providing a surround or cylindrical 9,000 pound lift system. If you notice, none of our tethers are connected to the plastic. That's a key point here. You cannot achieve 4,000 or 9,000 pound tensile strength by fastening a tether to the plastic. The plastic is only as strong as it is, which is much less than 4,000. So we went to this weave technology. Let's take a look at the cross straps. There are three fundamental cross straps. One, two, three. These cross straps have a simple double wing side buckle that connect and pull. The fourth strap is what we call the T-strap. The tree strap is very similar, similar to a cross strap, only there is an additional strap that runs through the foot panel of the sled outside of the perimeter tether. This will enable this foot pad to allow stability for the individual inside the sled in a vertical lift. We'll demonstrate that during the lift process. But if you can picture how the sled comes together, I now have a perimeter tether with 4,000 pound cross straps outside of that tether, again, this is like a similar to a belt around your waist. 
The patient will lay on top of the bottom. This will come around them. That tether, excuse me, that cross strap literally wraps around the waist. There's no way to disembark that cross strap from the patient because it wraps around them. The head straps are only a thousand pounds. This is only designed to be used in a horizontal lift. And we'll describe that during our training outside. Now, inside the sled is a optional harness. This harness here is what we would call a patient restraint system. It is a recent requirement. The U.S. Army wanted the patient to be able to be stabilized inside, inside the sled to relieve pressure on the legs, especially in that vertical lift. When you'll feel foot pressure down here in a vertical lift situation, that harness now will come through the groin area and support that, that patient from the delta ring, relieving all pressure off the legs. Also, in, in a situation where that sled may tilt the opposite direction toward the head, that patient restraint system will keep all the pressure off the neck. We will demonstrate that outside. But that is the basic weave technology. It is one, two, three, four belkles tighten, and we are ready to go. Let's take a look how this works outside in a real situation. As we head outside to do our vertical and horizontal lift, I want to quickly demonstrate how to load a patient into the sled. We're going to be using both the with and without the harness. So first we're going to start with the backpack, which is a highly deployable, quick backpack. Starts at the top and opens wide open. Falls away. You'll set your backpack off to the side. You'll grab the Velcro strap, just one single strap, and put it the sled. In some instances, the sled may have a slight memory to it. All you have to do is grab the sides and squeeze it down to keep the memory wide open. Now again, I mentioned that the sled can be used with and without the harness. So the first thing in the field that you determine is your low extremities issues. If you believe you have a low extremity and you're going to go vertical or horizontal and you want to restrain that patient, then you want to use the harness. If you believe you have an upper body injury and you do not need the harness, then we'll load the patient quickly without it. If you notice, the harness comes with a cover to protect the harness inside so that it stays out of your way. So let's take a look at how to load a patient without using the harness, which would be more of an upper body injury. We have a down soldier. He does not have lower extremities. We're going to load him without using the harness. As you saw, we deployed the sled earlier. It was a roll, easy rollout. Take the sled, place it next to the patient, or log roll the patient, push the sled over, slide the patient on. You can see it's a very slick environment. Place the patient in the sled, unconnect cross straps, You notice the quick release buckles, the snap and pull. If the strap wants to slide, all you have to do is place your finger or your thumb, put a little pressure and pull. Tighten this T-strap. You notice this T-strap is in between the feet, if possible. Depending on his injuries, you do want to snug this up. What's occurred now is the sides of the sled have come up around, 
creating a tubular or singular shape which will make the sled rigid. Again, we mentioned the, the head straps. If you're only going to be in a vertical situation, you can close this down for a little protection. There is no reason to bring this all the way forward unless you're in a horizontal lift. A horizontal lift, in case you tilted toward the head, you'd want to tighten this up to be sure that individual couldn't slide out. Now we have two ways to move our patient. We can use the foot toe strap and pull from the feet, which we recommend in most situations. If you go to an incline, you want the head up, feet down. If you were in an active fire range or under fire, We'd want to take the, vertical, the horizontal lift straps that are in the bag, connect to your delta ring, and pull from the head if this patient is capable of returning fire. There are six handle straps that are connected to the perimeter tether. This is a no-lift device, but if you did need to assist or carry or move quickly, you can lift from these handles in turn. Again, the sled will remain rigid. You notice how fast we loaded the patient. It was a, you typically under 60 seconds to put the sled in and go. You do not have to use all four straps uh, to move the individual or protect him with the sides of the sled. Let's take a look at how we're going to use the harness. Let's demonstrate now how to use the harness because our patient has lower extremity issues, either an amputation below the knee, at the thigh, or just any kind of uh, crush situation with the feet or the legs. Now the harness is going to provide that support that's not using the base of the sled. Here we're going to undo the buckles. At the top of the harness is a remove cover. We're going to undo the harness buckles. out. We're going to do the exact same thing and log roll this patient. Again, we would use two people normally. Here we have a lower extremity issues. So we want to be careful with his legs. And then bring this harness up through the crotch. Orange to orange. and blue to blue. The harness is removable by just pulling these tabs. I'll pull this so you can see the process. Same procedure as before, tighten the cross straps. Okay, now what we've created Again, we've cocooned and protect the patient, but now is 100% being supported from the groin area when we go into a vertical lift. Both the sled with the perimeter tether and most importantly the harness 
is being supported at the delta ring. So when we go to lift on this delta ring, it will in fact be lifting up into the harness in the groin area, taking full relief from his legs. The legs will, the legs will no longer feel any pressure from the sled whatsoever. Advantages. In a medic situation, we know that we have uh, uh, issues in the lower legs. These femoral arteries that are running down the inside of the groin, that pressure will help with some of that, limiting that blood flow to an open wound. We're only going to be sustaining that for a few minutes. It may be uncomfortable for the patient, but it will be providing some of the needed pressure that we're looking for in the lower groin area. Now we're ready to take him outside and go vertical and horizontal. For a vertical lift. Again, we've used the harness because we believe our patient has lower extremity issues. We want to take the pressure off of those legs. The harness will be supporting our patient from the groin area up. As you can see, the harness comes through here, through the groin, through a seat pad, and then gathers again in the 9,000 pound delta ring. That is where we're going to hook for our instant vertical lift. Now, if you recall, there was no time delay between mounting him in the harness, doing the cross straps, and immediately connecting him to the nine pound delta ring. No other preparations need to be made to the sled. That was part of its patented technology that you can instantly go vertical as soon as you put the individual in the sled with or without the harness. Let's take a look at what that vertical lift looks like. We'll take our 9,000 pound carabiner that came within the bag, We'll connect it to the delta ring, and we'll lock that carabiner. Let's take a look at that up close. These are the perimeter, stra perimeter tether strap. This is the harness strap. So we'll actually be lifting this patient up from the harness. Now normally we could do this as one person, but to prevent any kind of issue in the mid area, we're going to go ahead and do a two-man lift to get this sled just going off the ground. Louie will help be my assistant. We're going to grab these two straps and as we begin the vertical lift, so now we have the individual standing straight up, now we'll take him off the ground. Now we've suspended him vertically, you can see he's about a foot off the ground. The groin harness strap or the seat is supporting him, so he has very little pressure on his feet whatsoever. Again, this is 100% vertical with a single connection point. We can immediately lift. Hand is on the side to guide him up a manhole, up a cave, or straight up the side of a sheer cliff. We could be using uh, the same exact situation without the harness. Let's take a look at our horizontal lift now. We have the patient in the sled. I'd like to demonstrate a horizontal lift now. We have to implement two straps, the lift straps, that will go underneath the sled. You need to clearly recognize that there's a head strap and a foot strap. One is labeled head. Why we're doing this is the head strap will be a little shorter, create a, creating a natural incline so that the feet rise down and the head is up. This tries to make sure that the patient does not tilt toward the head even though if he did by accident that the patient restraint system would hold that patient in the sled. So let's take a look how easy it is to put on the horizontal lift straps. Find the head strap, place it next to the sled. You're going to notice there's a hole here and a hole here. The only two holes on the sled, four holes, excuse me, two per side that are not being used. Take the other strap, place it by that side, grab the handles, and pull. Once you're over the straps, take the end, feed it through the hole, and then the other side through the hole. Same thing here, and here. Sled will naturally balance as you lift, but it makes it easier to go ahead and balance the straps when you hook the carabiner on. Take the carabiner, unlock, place it through the four loops.
lock the carabiner. You are now ready for a horizontal lift. However, in most helo situations, we're going to use a tagline to prevent from rotor wash. So I'd like to go ahead and show you how to implement that before we do a horizontal tagline lift. Tagline kit. Tagline is to secure the sled from the ground surface during a horizontal lift. Typically that horizontal lift will be in a helo environment, again, to prevent rotor wash. Just pull out the two locking D-rings. This will create a V-strap. The V-strap is an option. The sled already has a type of V-strap on its foot, and we want that natural tilt. You can connect both to the natural pull strap on the bottom of the sled. Or you can separate that if you choose to have more stabilization. You can connect both of these to the side of the sled. Our recommendation would be to either grab this handle or the actual perimeter tether itself and lock. This creates a side view V-strap. Why would you use a single point versus a double V-strap? Really depends on how your load is being raised. If you have an uneven load, you need, might need more stability. If you just have a human going up with most of his weight in his hip, you may use a single pull from the feet and keep that natural incline that you're going to have. In between the rope and the V-strap is what we call a weak link. A weak link is a small string designed to break at a predetermined poundage anywhere from 135 pounds to 350 pounds, depending on your requirement. The need of that weak link is to prevent this, the rope from getting caught in the, in the soldier's legs, rucksack, backpack, or arms, or potentially into it even a tree. As that helo lifts, you want this to go ahead and fail versus the entire system or the helo winch failing. So this is a precautionary measure to protect the individual on the ground that is actually doing the stabilization. So let's take a look at what a horizontal lift looks like. We're now in a horizontal lift situation. You can see the natural tilt to the feet. It keeps his head up. However, we did tighten these head straps. Notice the bringing the head portion back over. In case there was a vertical tilt the opposite direction, we have that. That would be without the harness. We actually have the harness on, so that patient restraint system prevents him from moving down to his feet or up to his head. Also connected the V-strap, which would then be in a situation we would hold as it lifts. We let that feed through our fingers, prevent that from spinning with rotor wash. The easy handles on the side allow ground personnel to keep him stable until the lift actually begins. Let's go take a look at how to put the sled away. Now we're going to take a look at the sled and inspect it. Before we do, I want to be sure we mention there are two types or two ways to pull the sled. To drag the sled is the drag advice. We talked to you earlier about a foot drag strap. Again, we'll mention that we prefer a foot drag versus a head drag environment. That is because in many situations, especially in current theater, we have hills and inclines. We believe we want the head up, feet down as we go down that incline. However, if we are in a situation where we're under fire and our patient is able to return fire, we can do a head drag. If we want to do the front Either pull, we're drag. going to take the horizontal lift straps that we used outside for our horizontal lift. One has a carabiner. We're going to go ahead and take that and we're going to show you three different ways in which you can use this. One, you'll connect the loop and connect this directly to the delta ring. And now you have two single man hand pulls. Put your hand through like this and like this. You could either have a second man or you could pull both. If you would like to do a waist pull, <clears throat> take one of these off. Pass through. You now have almost a 10 foot tether which to pass through again and over your shoulder for a shoulder strap pull or around your waist for a waist pull.
or you can connect to your router. Equipment is critical. It needs to be clean, dry, and put away safely. The first thing you should do with a high angle rescue device or any kind of vertical device is check all your webbing, check all your connection points, and make sure everything is tight. So we need to go ahead and inspect. Be sure this is continued to be tight. You want to look at the stitching, both on the harness and outside. Go all the way down the perimeter tether and see if there's any abrasions, any uh, contusions. See if it's been torn anywhere on both sides. Cross the back and then look at all your cross straps. Check every piece of harness as if you were going to be in this in the next rescue. From that point forward, we're going to start with the harness. The seat is adjustable, so you want to pull the seat up. There's a small piece of Velcro here. I want you to put that seat and Velcro the seat on. But you go ahead and pull the straps so they're flat on the sled. Grab the orange buckle and pull it out until the handle's at the top. Put that into the orange buckle. Do the same for the blue. Pull it out. Connect. Now go ahead and adjust so that the harness lays flat on the sled. Then you can take the cover and place it across the bottom Velcro, making sure the harness is not in the way. Go ahead and go up one side. Tuck the excess handles down in. So again, now your harness is completely out of the way. Now we want to take whatever wipes you have, any sanitary wipes that you use on current bed mattresses and your triage centers, whatever decon you use, and we want to go ahead and decon the sled. Is decon capable? Now, if you do have bodily fluids in any of these cross straps or webbing, you may consider either one, washing those, or two, replacing those. Every strap on the sled is easily removable and easily replaceable. I'm going to go ahead and pull your cross straps out and buckle. You always want your cross straps connected so that you know where they are next time you put your patient on in your under fire as an example. Go ahead and lay these straps, tighten them until they're flat across the sled. Now at the foot of the sled, you need to make sure that you Give plenty of slack so that you're able to curl this under, the foot pad under. Take your head straps and pull these all the way out to the end. And you are ready to roll. key is to keep this underneath the sled so when you finish your roll, you're able to completely wrap it around it without lifting the sled. So I'm going to tuck that underneath. Make sure all buckles are pushed to the right side. Tuck this as tight as you can with your hands and begin to roll. Now the key here is to keep downward pressure on the roll so that it doesn't expand. This is much easier to do if you're on the ground and are able to use your, your human weight.
Velcro on the side. And you're ready to go. Now go and retrieve your horizontal lift straps. Disconnect them. And roll these into a small roll. This keeps them from being tangled and ready for next use. We place this in one of the four convenient pouches. Make sure your sled is dry, disinfected, properly stored, and properly put away for your next emergency deployment. I'd like to talk to you briefly about the uh, MedSled Vertical Lift Rescue Flotation System. The flotation system has three components, two float logs and one chest pad. The float logs are made of 500 denier fabric similar to an avionics life preserver. Extremely tough with welded edges. We do not have a bladder. It's a single bladder system. We fold these universal float logs in half in Velcro to keep most of the fabric out of our way while we're using the sled. What's critical is that they're universal. There is no left, there is no right. You can place these on either side of the sled, which is very beneficial in darkness or in undercover. The chest pad will reach between the first and the second cross strap. All you do is feed it through the straps. Float log comes with a 33 gram CO2 instant inflation cartridge. It's a half inch marine actuator. Pull the actuator, it will inflate in seconds. Or you can do a five breath manual, which we will demonstrate. Each log comes with a rapid deployment dump valve. So if you need to lower or take air out of this for a specific reason or to put it away, you're able to pull this immediately and dump all air with inside the log. Let me show you how to install this. It is easy. There are three simple buckles and critical placements. You just start at the top where the perimeter tether that runs the full length comes out. Just go ahead and buckle your first buckle here. Second buckle to the perimeter tether. And third buckle and the third op opportunity for the perimeter tether. This allows this to just hang loosely, but again, we have Velcroed it closed so that it is out of the way. The chest pad just takes the first cross strap, pass it through the loop, and the second cross strap and pass it through the loop. We'll do this on the other side. Before we inflate our other one in instant flotation, I'd like to show you a manual inflator. In case you inadvertently had a spent cartridge or no cartridge at all, which you should have checked before you used the equipment, you can take the manual inflator, which has a screw valve. The top of the valve pushes up and down thus allowing you to blow air in or let air out. You screw the locking device down. That allows the rubber top piece to push. It is a five breath, typically a five breath in, uh, inflation.
you know, screw the locking device back up to make sure none of the air comes back out. You now have a fully inflated float log. We can install that onto the sled. Again, the same technique that we used on the other side, starting at the first opportunity with the perimeter tether. Just click one, click two, click three. We recommend that you install your flotation before you go enter into the water in any situation. Though you can install these if you had to while you were in the water, but we recommend you doing it prior to entering the water. Let's talk about the instant inflator. I mentioned you get a 33 cartridge, 33 gram cartridge, and here is a green indicator. That green indicator was installed to say that this has been reset from its previous time and ready to be discharged. When you, after discharging this, you would then reset this, put a new cartridge in, and then put your green pin in. You would never put your green pin in with a discharged cartridge. The red handle says jerk to inflate. If you recall, the plate is folded in half, the log is folded in half. Those Velcro tabs will release as we inflate. So a simple jerk down. You can see that took less than a second and a half or two. If for some reason the log wanted to over inflate in high temperature heat or ambient air, the dump valve will release if necessary. It was very critical for us to use a 33 gram cartridge. We wanted to be sure when you were working in low temperatures and causing the air volume to be smaller that you would still have a fully inflated log. So the log is very, very stiff so that you receive its full potential of buoyancy. Current buoyancy is about a thousand pounds with both logs of human weight. And human weight is almost neutrally buoyant to water. It's not necessarily that they'll carry a thousand pounds of other weight, whether that be ammunition, rocks, or gear, but it will carry up to a thousand pounds. That's a variable when you start adding gear to what you can float with, with these floats. But they were over designed. Each float has a handle on the end. We realize that when in the water, these floats make it more difficult to grab the sled when you're in. So you can actually grab the float itself to stabilize. It was designed so that it will float like a bobber. Feet will be down, head will be up. You really don't want to lay the individual down flat. Floats will rise, the face could go under. That will help with the, with the chest pad if in fact it would roll, it should roll right back over. We've done some extensive testing to make sure that in the water that you'll maintain a bobber-like head up, feet down position. If you needed to do a head drag, you would again get your horizontal lift straps, connect anywhere onto the sled to drag through the water. Once you reach your uh, takeout point, you pull from the head, you could grab from the hook and hoist up. Now, to put little float logs away, you'll take them off, you will go to the dump valve, pull the dump valve, and squeeze. Do your best to remove as much air as possible. Let dry. Once you have a dry float, you flip it over and we're going to connect the Velcro tabs to each other and in effect making the float log half of its original size. As such. Two ways. You can roll this 
starting at the CO2 actuator cartridge, which is here. Fold over, leave the cartridge there, and roll. This would then be positioned inside one of your pouches in your backpack. If in fact you want to keep the sled with the flotation, you would go ahead and take your dry buoyancy lug, reconnect it to the sled, and roll, and we'll demonstrate that. The green pin is missing now. When we activated this, that was broken and disposed of itself. This card will show you when you see red, stop, green, it's reset. You can take the cartridge out just by screwing. You can look at the end of the cartridge, there'll be a pinhole. A new cartridge is flat. So before you reset, lift the arm up, screw a cartridge back in. Be sure it's snug and replace a green set pin. The green reset pins come six to a container. They come in a small little plastic bag. They are a half moon with a pin on them. They are very fragile. You need to be very, very gentle with them. Match the half moon, put the pin in the actuator hole, and push in. It'll click right in. Now you are reset and recharged. You never want to put a old, have an old cylinder with a green pin. Always replace the cylinder before you replace the green pin. I'd like to now show you how to install the flotation device on the sled and roll it for uh, used to ready to go next time. As you can see, we have a deflated, fully dry, folded float log on both sides. We have our chest pad connected to both the top and the middle cross strap. Position the float logs just inside, underneath the edge of the sled. And we're going to roll like last time. Starting as tight as you possibly can. And install in your bag. and you're ready to transport. Once again, both sleds, both the MS VLR 28 PJ sled, which is the 28 inch platform, as well as the 36 we demonstrated on, both are capable of flotation, both have vertical and horizontal lift, both have those three key attributes we discussed in the beginning of our training. Simplicity, speed, and less training. Very intuitive. There's no uh, weaving of anything, where all the sleds come with the weave technology, with all the built-in perimeter tether and the cross straps. Now again, I want to remind you that most of what you saw today was a single individual. We believe protocol is with two people when handling a human being. I also want you to understand that we are not high angle rescue experts, that we prepared the sleds for high angle rescue. We prepared the sleds for lift. So the sled is capable for vertical lift, but once you start to lift that off the ground, you really need to talk to an expert about high angle rescue rigging. Thank you very much. Please contact MedSled at 314-965-7533 for additional information.